in the far reaches of the galaxy, being the fringe systems and nebulae where light itself struggled to penetrate, a diplomatic envoy of the Zentri Empire descended upon the planet known to its inhabitants as Earth. The Zentri were an ancient species, renowned for their intelligence and technological prowess. Yet, despite their extensive travels through the cosmos, they had never encountered a species as rugged and formidable as the Death Worlders. On the eve of their arrival, Earth was buzzing with anticipation and trepidation. The Council of Earth, a coalition of the planet's most influential leaders, convened in the Grand Chamber of the United Nations, diplomats, scientists, and military leaders all gathered, united in their purpose, to understand the demands of the Zentri and prepare for the worst. The Zentri ship, a magnificent vessel shimmering with energy, landed softly in the middle of a field in the Midwest, as the craft's ramp descended. A strange hush fell over the assembled crowd. Three Zentri stepped down, their forms elegantly slender and covered in iridescent skin, that seemed to shift colors with every movement. Their eyes, large and multifaceted, scanned the human delegation. The leader of the Zentri, an ambassador named T. Khan, stepped forward. We come in peace, he proclaimed in a voice that resonated with authority yet held a soothing timbre. We have witnessed the conflicts that have torn your world apart. We wish to extend our hand in friendship. The humans were taken aback. While they were accustomed to the allure of peace talks, the Zentri were known for their cold, calculating nature. Rumors of their genocidal past lingered in the air like an ominous cloud. Why should we trust you? A military general barked from the crowd. Your kind is known for subjugation, not alliance. T. Con regarded the general with a mixture of respect and curiosity. Understandable, but know this, we have learned it from our past. The Zentri Empire has come to see the value in cohabitation. We seek to form an alliance, not out of fear, but out of necessity. With that, T. Com revealed the reason for their visit. A massive cosmic storm was barreling toward Earth, one that would disrupt the fabric of space-time itself, threatening to consume the planet. The Zentri had encountered similar storms before, and their advanced technology could provide Earth with the means to survive. As discussions unfolded, the humans began to warm to the idea. They shared stories of their own struggles, of resilience against the odds, of wars waged not just against each other but against nature itself. The Zentri listened, fascinated by the Death Worlders' tenacity and adaptability. In the days that followed, the negotiations took on a new tone. Earth representatives proposed a joint task force to prepare for the storm, blending human ingenuity with Zentri technology. The prospect of collaboration ignited hope among the people of Earth, and the Zentri, once viewed as potential conquerors, became partners. Then, the day of reckoning arrived. The cosmic storm hit Earth with terrifying force, but together, humans and Zentri worked tirelessly, combining their strengths to harness the energy and redirect its path. It was a monumental effort that tested the limits and forged bonds that would last a lifetime. As the storm passed and the skies cleared, the world stood in awe, the threat had been neutralized, and for the first time, a species once feared had proven to be an ally. T. Con addressed the gathered crowd once more, let this be a lesson to us all, peace can only be forged, in the fires of mutual understanding and respect, we are not so different, you and I, both Death Worlders and Zentri have faced adversity and have the strength to overcome it. With that, the alliance was solidified, the Zentri once perceived as distant observers of the universe, became integral members of the Earth community. Together, they embarked on a journey of exploration, pushing the boundaries of what it meant to coexist in a vast and often hostile universe. From that day forward, humans learned to embrace the unexpected, discovering that sometimes, peace can be found in the most unlikely of places even with the most formidable of foes. The Death Worlders had indeed formed an unbreakable bond with their new allies, and the galaxy would soon learn the power of unity in the face of cosmic challenges. As the dust settled on the alliance between humans and Zentri, the Earth Council celebrated their victory over the cosmic storm and the newfound camaraderie with their extraterrestrial partners. Yet, beneath the surface of this apparent harmony lay a tension that few dared to address openly, the lingering mistrust towards the Zentri rooted in their historical reputation. In the wake of the storm, T. Khan and his fellow diplomats worked alongside Earth scientists and engineers to integrate their technologies. 
they set up research stations across the globe, sharing knowledge about energy manipulation and atmospheric control. The collaboration blossomed, yet whispers of skepticism lingered among the populace. Can we really trust them? murmured a senator during a closed meeting. What if they only wished to exploit our resources? The council debated endlessly, but the decision was clear to ensure the alliance's success. They needed to be transparent with their citizens. TCOM was invited to address a global forum, a historic moment that would set the tone for future interactions. Standing before a crowd filled with mixed emotions, TCOM began, We are aware of your fears. We do not expect you to embrace us blindly. Trust is built over time, through actions, not words. He paused, letting his gaze sweep across the audience. We have made mistakes in our past, and we have learned it from them. Our intention is to forge a future where both our species can thrive. Despite the ambassador's efforts, skepticism remained. Unbeknownst to T. Con and his team, a faction of human self-identified as the Pure Earth Coalition began rallying against the alliance. They claimed the Zentry were merely wolves in sheep's clothing, intent on undermining humanity's sovereignty. As tensions simmered, a series of unexplained incidents began to occur. Sabotage at research facilities, communications hacked, and misinformation spread like wildfire. The coalition claimed the Zentry were behind these disruptions, while the Zentry insisted they were innocent, but the seeds of distrust were sown deeper. In a secret meeting, the coalition leaders plotted their next move. We cannot allow this alliance to continue. Their spokesperson, a fiery woman named Clara, proclaimed, We must show the world. The truth, Zentry will betray us when it suits their needs. Their plan was audacious. They would stage an attack that appeared to be a Zentry operation, aimed at igniting public outrage. To Clara, the end justified the means. Meanwhile, T. Con sensed the growing unease. His diplomatic intuition told him that the fragile alliance was on the brink of collapse. To avert disaster, he saw a solution that would unite both humans and Zentry against a common threat. In an extraordinary move, TCOM proposed a joint expedition to the neighboring planet, Mars. We must demonstrate our unity, he argued at a council meeting. A mission to explore our solar system together could serve as a powerful symbol of cooperation. It could erase the shadows of the past. Reluctantly, the council agreed. Plans for the Mars expedition commenced, drawing interest from various sectors of society. Scientists and engineers from both species began working together, and the shared goal ignited enthusiasm among Earth's populace. However, the Pure Earth Coalition was not about to let this opportunity pass. As preparations progressed, they launched their deceptive attack. Late one night, a group of Coalition members infiltrated a Zentry research facility, using advanced hacking technology to fabricate a crisis. Alarms blared, and false alerts went out claiming that a Zentry experiment had gone awry, threatening human lives. The chaos that ensued was precisely what Clara had hoped for. News networks erupted with sensationalist coverage, painting the Zentry as reckless and dangerous. The Alliance's supporters found themselves in an uphill battle, trying to quell the rising tide of fear and anger. T. Con, undeterred, took to the airwaves. We will not allow fear to define our actions, he stated firmly in a live broadcast. We will stand together, not as humans and Zentry, but as partners. We will investigate this incident and reveal the truth. With the help of Earth's best investigative teams and the Zentry's advanced surveillance technology, they quickly traced the attack back to the Pure Earth Coalition. The evidence was irrefutable, revealing the depths of the Coalition's manipulation. Clara and her faction were arrested, and their plans were laid bare for all to see. In the wake of the revelation, the mood shifted dramatically. The citizens of Earth, once gripped by paranoia, began to recognize the strength of the alliance. Public support for the Zentry surged as they worked side by side to repair the damage caused by the coalition's sabotage. The Mars expedition proceeded as planned. As T. Con and a team of human astronauts descended onto the Red Planet, they stood side by side, united under a shared banner of exploration. The view of Earth from Mars was breathtaking a blue jewel suspended in the darkness of space. With their mission a resounding success, t turned to his human companions. This is just the beginning, he said, his voice filled with conviction. Together, 
We can face any challenge the universe throws at us. This alliance will pave the way for countless adventures and for generations to come. As the stars twinkled above them, the Death Worlders and their newfound allies looked toward the cosmos with hope, united in purpose. They prepared to explore not just new worlds, but the potential of a brighter future together. The Mars expedition proved to be a transformative experience for both humans and Zentry as they navigated the arid landscape. They unearthed remnants of ancient Martian civilization artifacts that hinted at a lost world teeming with intelligence long before humanity set foot on Earth. Scientists from both species collaborated to analyze the findings, marveling at the advanced technology and architecture that once thrived on the now barren planet. Back on Earth, the revelations from the Mars expedition reignited interest in the alliance. Citizens began to see the potential for collaboration, not just for survival but for growth and discovery. The Council of Earth held forums, where Zentry diplomats shared insights into their culture, technology, and history. Mutual respect blossomed as stories of struggle, triumph, and the pursuit of knowledge were exchanged. However, not everyone shared this optimism. While Clara and the Pure Earth Coalition were dismantled, remnants of their ideology lingered in the hearts of some. Fear and prejudice are often persistent, even in the face of overwhelming evidence. A small but vocal group of dissenters continue to incite mistrust against the Zentry, spreading conspiracy theories about their true intentions. In response, t Khan and the Earth Council launched a joint campaign to foster goodwill. They organized cultural exchanges, technology fairs, and public forums aimed at building personal relationships between citizens of both worlds. Despite these efforts, underlying tensions simmered. As the Zentry shared their advanced technology, some human engineers felt overshadowed, believing their contributions were undervalued. One night, after a particularly heated meeting, a young engineer named Mark, fueled by frustration and envy, found himself at the edge of the research facility. He watched as T. Con and a group of Zentry scientists worked late into the night, their laughter echoing in the stillness. What do they have that we don't? He muttered to himself. Consumed by resentment, Mark overheard snippets of a conversation. The artifact is almost ready for the energy synthesis, one Zentry scientist said. With this, we can revolutionize energy transfer across planets. An idea began to form in Mark's mind, one that twisted with anger and betrayal. If he could just prove the Zentry were untrustworthy, he thought, maybe he could rally the others to his side. They wouldn't just protect Earth, they would drive the Zentry off their planet entirely. Over the next few weeks, Mark worked in secret. He exploited his knowledge of the Zentry technology to engineer a malfunction during a crucial demonstration of the energy synthesis project owned that would be broadcast live to millions. If it went wrong, he thought, the public would panic, believing the Zentry's promises of cooperation were a facade. On the day of the demonstration, Excitement buzzed through the air as a diverse audience gathered to witness the event. T. Khan stood before them, his usual confidence radiating, while human scientists prepared to showcase the groundbreaking energy synthesis system. As the demonstration commenced, T. Khan spoke passionately about the potential benefits for both species, detailing how this technology could provide clean energy to millions. The crowd leaned in, captivated. But in the shadows, Mark activated the sabotage. A surge of energy rippled through the system. Alarms blared, lights flickered, and panic erupted. The Zentry scientists scrambled to contain the situation, but chaos ensued. Stop, T. Con shouted, trying to regain control, but the energy fluctuations grew unstable. Mark's heart raised. This was it. Suddenly, a blinding flash filled the auditorium as the system malfunctioned spectacularly. The crowd gasped. Many ducking for cover, convinced that the Zentry had unleashed something dangerous upon them. In the aftermath, as the dust settled and emergency crews rushed in, the chaos transformed into accusations. See, they can't be trusted, Mark shouted, his voice rising above the clamor. This is what we're dealing with a threat to our very existence. T. Con, shaken but composed, stepped forward. This was not our doing. We came here in good faith and we will rectify this situation. But fear had taken hold. The media exploded with sensational headlines. Zentry technology malfunction, a threat to humanity. 
Voices rose, echoing the fears of a few who had always opposed the alliance. In the following days, the Council of Earth held emergency meetings. TCON faced growing hostility, as some council members questioned the wisdom of continuing the partnership. We need to protect our people, one shouted. We can gamble our future on a race that doesn't have our best interests at heart. Amidst the turmoil, TCON refused to give in. We will find the source of this sabotage, he asserted firmly. Our partnership has been built on trust and cooperation. We cannot let fear dictate our actions. With the help of Earth Security Forces and the Zentry's advanced tracking technology, they launched an investigation. Mark, realizing the weight of his actions, was engulfed by guilt. He knew he had crossed a line, but he couldn't bring himself to confess. Instead, he watched as T. Khan and his team uncovered evidence, leading directly to his sabotage. The truth became undeniable. As the evidence piled up, Mark was apprehended. His actions laid bare for all to see. I wanted to protect us, he said, tears streaming down his face during his confrontation with T. Khan. I thought I could save Earth from your kind. T. Khan regarded him with a mix of disappointment and compassion. You are blinded by fear. Together, we can overcome any challenge, but we must choose to do so with trust. The incident shook the alliance but ultimately reinforced its resolve. Clara's faction had failed, but the seeds of doubt had lingered, only to be cultivated by Mark's betrayal. In the aftermath, the Earth Council, alongside T. Khan, initiated a series of restorative measures. They invited the public to witness the improvements in Zentry technology and the enhancements made to ensure safety and transparency. During a global broadcast, TCON addressed the citizens of Earth once more. We are not perfect, nor are we infallible. We stand before you, humbled by the trust you have shown. Let this be a lesson for us all. Trust is built not only through words, but through actions. With the betrayal behind them, the alliance between humans and Zentry was on solid ground, as preparations began for the next ambitious venture and exploration of the nearby star system of Proxima Centauri. The excitement among both species was palpable. They hoped to discover new worlds, resources, and possibly even life forms that could further enrich their understanding of the universe. t Khan and the Earth Council worked closely to ensure that the mission would be both collaborative and transparent. They held public forums inviting citizens to share their hopes and concerns. The theme of the journey, unity in exploration, resonated deeply with people, reigniting a sense of curiosity and adventure. However, amidst that excitement, whispers of dissent still lingered. Some factions, while silenced after the revelations surrounding the Pure Earth Coalition, remained skeptical about the Zentry. The narrative of distrust had become entrenched in some communities, and T. Khan understood that a successful mission was essential to healing these wounds. The day of the launch arrived, and a magnificent spacecraft, Unity, stood ready at the launch site. Its sleek, shimmering design combined human engineering with Zentry technology, a symbol of their collaboration. On board were a diverse crew of scientists, engineers, and diplomats search one eager to contribute to the mission's success. As the countdown began, T. Con stood at the forefront alongside Captain Elena Martinez, a seasoned astronaut known for her fearless leadership. This is our moment, she declared to the crew. We will show the universe what can be achieved when we work together, trust in each other, and we will make history. With a thunderous roar, Unity launched into the depths of space, carrying the hopes of two species. As they sailed through the cosmos, the crew conducted experiments, analyzed stellar phenomena, and shared stories of their cultures during their downtime. Tensions eased, and bonds formed as they navigated the challenges of space travel together. After several weeks, they arrived at the Proxima Centauri system. It was a stunning sight three planets orbiting a dim red star, each shrouded in mystery. The crew quickly began their analysis, focusing on the second planet, which appeared to be within the habitable zone. Descending onto the surface, the team marveled at the vibrant ecosystems. Lush flora thrived, under the pale light of the distant sun, and the air was filled with the sounds of unknown creatures. Scientists eagerly collected samples, documenting everything they encountered. As they ventured deeper into the planet's lush valleys, they stumbled upon ancient ruined structures reminiscent of the Martian artifacts, but distinctly different in design. Tikon led the team, 
studying the intricate carvings that adorn the walls, their meanings elusive yet captivating. These ruins could represent an intelligent civilization, he mused, a glint of excitement in his multifaceted eyes. The discovery sparked enthusiasm among the crew, but it also raised questions. What happened to the beings that built these structures? Elena pondered aloud. Did they leave, or were they wiped out? As they continued their exploration, tensions began to rise again. While most crew members embraced the collaboration, a faction led by Mark, still grappling with his past actions, expressed concern over the implications of their findings. What if these ruins were a warning? He argued. What if we're repeating history, opening ourselves to a danger we can't comprehend? His words hung in the air, stirring unease among the crew. Some recalled the incidents back on Earth, memories of fear and distrust flooding back. They began to question their mission, fearing the consequences of their curiosity. Determined to quell the rising anxiety, T. Con organized a gathering around a fire that evening, under the alien stars. He spoke passionately about the importance of understanding and cooperation. The unknown can be frightening, he acknowledged, but it also holds the key to our growth. We must approach it with courage, not fear. The crew listened, then slowly, the atmosphere began to shift. T. Khan shared stories from his people's history tales of their own missteps and how they had learned it from them. We are explorers by nature. We seek knowledge not just for ourselves, but for the betterment of all life in the universe. He concluded. The night passed with renewed camaraderie, the crew members sharing their own stories, creating an atmosphere of hope and resilience. They all agreed to push forward, to uncover the secrets of the ruins, not just for themselves, but to honor the civilizations that once thrived on this distant planet. The next day, equipped with newfound determination, the team resumed their investigation of the ruins. As they delved deeper into the site, they began to unearth technology artifacts that suggested a society not only advanced but also tragically flawed. Tools, records, and devices lay scattered, offering glimpses into the lives of those who once inhabited this world. Suddenly, an alarm blared from their equipment, indicating a disturbance nearby. The crew rushed to the source and discovered a massive fissure opening in the ground a sign that their excavation had triggered an unforeseen reaction. As they scrambled to assess the situation, Strange energy waves rippled through the air, causing the ground to tremble. T. Con and Elena exchanged glances, realizing the danger they faced. We need to evacuate, Elena shouted, rallying her team. With urgency, the crew made their way back to Unity, narrowly escaping the collapsing structures. The ground shook violently, and debris rained down around them. Just as they reached the ship, they heard a low rumbly deep, resonating growl that sent shivers down their spines. As they launched back into orbit, the crew watched in horror as the once thriving landscape of the alien world transformed into a storm of dust and chaos. Tikon turned to the others, his expression solemn. We have disturbed something ancient, he said, his voice steady. We must tread carefully in our pursuit of knowledge. Back aboard Unity, the crew was left to process what had transpired. They had uncovered a civilization lost to time but the dangers of their exploration had become all too real. And, upon their return to Earth, the crew of Unity was greeted as heroes. News of their successful mission spread like wildfire, igniting public enthusiasm and curiosity about the cosmos. The findings from Proxima Centauri not only showcased the potential for advanced civilizations, but also reminded humanity of the delicate balance between exploration and caution. In the following weeks, the Earth Council held a summit to discuss the implications of the discoveries and how to move forward. T. Con, alongside Captain Elena Martinez, presented their findings, emphasizing the importance of responsible exploration and the lessons learned from the ruins they had unearthed. Knowledge is a double-edged sword, T. Con began, his voice resonating with authority. We must wield it with wisdom, ensuring that our thirst for discovery does not lead us to repeat the mistakes of those who came before us. The council members listened intently, absorbing the weight of his words. While most were inspired, a few remained skeptical, still haunted by the shadows of distrust. Are we really prepared to face the consequences of our curiosity? One council member questioned, what if the beings that once inhabited those ruins are not gone? What if they're watching us? T. Con's eyes narrowed slightly, 
then we must be vigilant and respectful. Our exploration must be grounded in a commitment to coexistence, not conquest. We must reach out to those we may encounter with open minds and hearts. As the summit concluded, the Council voted to expand the Alliance's exploratory efforts, commissioning a fleet of ships for deeper space exploration. Yet, behind the optimism lay an undercurrent of anxiety. Tensions with rival factions were rising. Other planetary coalitions watched with envy as the humans and Zentry thrived, their partnership a beacon of hope in an often hostile universe. Weeks turned into months, and preparations for the expanded mission began in earnest as the fleet assembled. However, signs of impending conflict began to manifest. Reports surfaced of unidentified ships lurking in the vicinity of Earth's orbit, and skirmishes broke out between exploratory factions from other systems, igniting fears of aggression and sabotage. Amidst the growing unease, T. Con suggested a proactive approach diplomatic outreach to neighboring star systems. If we are to thrive, we must show the universe that we are not just conquerors but ambassadors of peace, he argued. Captain Elena Martinez supported his vision, advocating for joint missions to engage other civilizations. We can establish connections that will deter aggression and build alliances, she added, her resolve firm. The Council ultimately approved a series of diplomatic missions, selecting a diverse team comprising both humans and Zentry. The first destination would be a nearby system, known for its rich resources and contentious politics, home to several factions vying for power. As the fleet departed, a mix of excitement and trepidation filled the air. t -Con stood at the helm of the flagship, Unity II, contemplating the challenges ahead. He knew the delicate balance they were trying to achieve. Let us be the harbingers of peace, he told the crew. Together, we can turn the tide of fear into understanding. Upon reaching the destination system, the crew of Unity II quickly discovered that their mission would not be as straightforward as they hoped. The political landscape was chaotic, with rival factions engaged in open conflict over territorial claims and resources. Tensions ran high. An initial attempts at diplomacy were met with suspicion and hostility. We must tread carefully, T. Con warned during their first meeting with a faction leader, a hardened warrior named Commander Vornik. We come in peace, seeking to establish mutual understanding, not to interface in your affairs. Vornik, a burly figure with fierce eyes, regarded T. Con with skepticism. Peace is a fragile thing. How can I trust you, Zentry? Your kind once fought against our people, and your partnership with the humans raises more questions than it answers. Elena stepped forward, her voice steady. We are here to learn from you and offer our support. We understand the complexities of conflict and seek to foster cooperation, not dominance. Together, we can face the challenges that threaten us all. For a moment, the room hung in silence. Vornik's expression softened slightly, but his distrust remained palpable. You may speak of peace, but the galaxy is filled with wolves in sheep's clothing. We do not need more predators among us. Realizing that words alone would not suffice, T. Com proposed a demonstration of goodwill. Let us join you in your efforts. Allow us to assist in defending your interests against those who seek to disrupt your way of life. Together, we can show that alliances can foster strength rather than weakness. Reluctantly, Vornik agreed to a temporary partnership allowing the crew to aid his faction in their defense against rival forces. T. Khan and his team worked tirelessly, integrating their advanced technology with the combat strategies of Vornik's forces. As tensions escalated, skirmishes erupted across the system. T. Khan and Elena found themselves at the heart of the conflict, navigating the complex landscape of loyalty and betrayal. They soon realized that their initial approach had been too naive. Rival factions were not merely driven by greed, but also by a desire to preserve their identities and cultures. Each faction believes they are the rightful guardians of this system. T. Con observed one evening as they strategized with Vornik. We must help them see that unity can serve their interests better than division. The crew devised a plan to bring the factions together for a summit, emphasizing the need for dialogue over violence. They invited leaders from all factions to unity II offering a neutral ground for a discussion. The summit was tense, with leaders glaring at one another across the conference table. Vornik sat her day beside T. Con and Elena, his body tense, 
while others, reluctant and defensive, shuffled in their seats. Welcome, T. Con began, projecting calmness. We are here not to dictate terms but to offer a path forward. The conflicts between you have drained resources and lights. Together, we can build a future based on cooperation and understanding.